AR Gravity, any day above ground, live it. Good morning to everybody. I hope you all had a great Thursday session with your families over some food and spades and all that good stuff and, and roasting because you fuckers roasted me last night. And, and, and y'all can all, you know what? I got something for all of y'all. Oh, you motherfuckers. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm putting cases on all you bitches. Y'all not bitches, but y'all y'all roasting my mac and cheese. Y'all can go to hell. I take it, though. But, uh, yeah, this morning we're going to be talking about David Horwitz. David Horwitz, if y'all remember, he and his Freedom Center denounced Candace Owens for her comments on Israel and Hamas. But he's a particular white supremacist because this white supremacist just doesn't like black people. So I'm actually surprised he didn't call her black names. He just said that she was basically stupid. But he couldn't say stupid because then he'd get labeled a racist. But old David, 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 David. Let's begin here. Let's begin here. You know, let me go here. There is a, <laughs> there, there's a growing concern. In so always with these think tanks that they just love coming outside and just espousing opinions and we're supposed to care. Okay, so be it. We will care. We'll do this for you, David. That you want to keep black people's name in your mouth. We'll do this for you. We'll do it. This is his website, the David Horwitz Freedom Center, conservative think tank. They say that they're a charity as well. They said this. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Denise Scales, good morning. You said, again, my apologies to you. It's all good. I, I got to take a roasting. It's all good. I ain't been roasted in a while, so it was good. It, it builds character. That's what they say. Roasting builds character. Uh, by the way, I'm in my insulation blankie because I, I, I felt the kind of way. I'm just kidding. It's cold. But yeah. And DSB, good morning. So, yeah, the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Don't you just love it on their homepage? They always ask for money first. They don't tell you what their mission is. The first thing they do is tell you to donate. They don't give no background, no nothing. A mission statement and then drop some money on us. Man, if you don't go somewhere. But anyway. It says, we are dedicated to the defense of free societies whose moral, cultural, and economic foundations are under attack by enemies, both secular and religious, at home and abroad. Which is hilarious because that's the same thing that Palestine is under. But y'all don't want Palestine to exist. It's quite funny. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I misquoted them. They don't want Hamas to exist. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> Lehman Lucas, good morning. Key Prince, good morning. We shall continue. Would you like to support his mission? I wonder what the minimum. The minimum is $25. All the way up to a G. You could also do a monthly. We make our impact through websites. We're utilizing the most awesome means of communication to spread our message and engage in a global dialogue. Our network of sites receive over 5 million views a month. Sites. Let's see who the sites are. Front Page Magazine, an online conservative political website edited by David Horowitz. Front Page Mag has been in continuous operation for nearly two decades. It's funny. Y'all have been in operation for two decades and nobody quotes you. <laughs> 
but okay. Here we go, Jihad Watch. Jihad Watch is dedicated to bringing public attention to the role that jihad theology and ideology play in the modern world and to correcting popular misconceptions about the role of jihad and religion in modern day conflicts. Again, another website that you are undertaking and nobody references. It's quite funny. Discoverthenetworks.org, a guide to the political left. Discover the Networks serves as an encyclopedia of the left. Close to 30 million readers and researchers have visited this encyclopedia of the left since it began. It contains fact-based data on individuals, organizations, causes, campaigns, and funders of the left. So you basically have an opensecrets.org website that nobody, again, references. Freedom Center on Campus, the Freedom Center's newest website, Freedom Center on Campus, serves as a home for all of our educational initiatives, including the Stop K-12 through Indoctrination Campaign, which combats leftist indoctrination in our K-12 through schools, and the Stop Jew Hatred on Campus Campaign, which exposes university professors and groups that promote hatred of Jewish people and causes. Did not realize that people saying that they were pro-Palestine meant they were anti-Jewish. Did not realize, but uh, you, you helped us. You helped us. Here we go again. Help us increase our reach. Our outreach relies on the generosity of our supporters. Join us today. So you're begging again for money. All right. Ooh, what is this? Free speech denied. Protesters unable to subdue leftist protesters at Emory University. So you were in Atlanta? Well, well, well. Let's see what this is. Fair use. Of course you went to Fox News. Okay, I'll put it you to you this way. I'm a Jew. The head of Hezbollah has said that he hopes that we will gather in Israel so he doesn't have to hunt us down globally. For it or against it? For it. So you took a Muslim student who disagreed with what Israel got going on and you're going to use that for a uh, campaign interesting Tori and Rain, good morning you said I was in your home state this week and I saw a billboard for a school called Yeshiva University you don't have to guess hard who that school caters to <laughs> we don't say that yes we do they cater to them folk they got one up in New York too uh, Jerry Bedford good morning Okay. But that will be waged in America. What we are facing is a radical. Radical Islam. I'm sorry, family. Maybe I'm missing it. Maybe I'm just oblivious to the world, but um, I didn't know radical Islam was fucking with America like that. I, I did not realize this. I didn't realize this. I, I know that they have cities in Michigan, but I didn't realize they were fucking with people like that. Oh, you're talking about New York. Yeah, yeah, Yeshiva. Yeah, Yeshiva University up in New York. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought you meant down here in Georgia. I didn't even realize they might have had one down there, but yeah. But yeah, there you go. Radical Islam is fucking with us in America. Okay. What else? Force within Islam that originated in Egypt with the Muslim Brotherhood. Funny that you said that during the goddamn war in Iraq. That's when you said that. Where is it? Islam. That University of Wisconsin, May 1st, 2008. While the war in Afghanistan was five years on. Um... Yeah. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. What Islamists did the uh did a terrorist attack since 9-11? Maybe I missed it. I'm not talking about in America. I'm I might have missed it. Hmm. That originated in Egypt. There are not two rights in the Middle East. There is evil and there is right. You said there's no two evils in the Middle East. There's evil and there's right. 
So who's evil and who's right? Hmm. There's no question, particularly in the liberal arts and humanities, the left dominates the professorship. They dominate the faculty. Good education means you're being taught both sides of the story. And that's not happening on the campuses right now. Oh, so y'all don't like it when both sides aren't being taught. Is that what he said? Let's play it again. Professorship, they dominate the faculty. Good education means you're being taught both sides of the story. And that's not happening on the campuses right now. Oh, hey, hey, Mr. Sir. Mr. 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 Sir. Um... Yeah, y'all don't like it when uh, both sides are being taught, huh? Both sides of history aren't taught. Y'all don't like that, huh? Hmm. Torian, you said, as a side note, I see why people hate Spectrum. Spectrum is the worst. There was Time Warner Cable. They are fucking worse. You're better off if you live in an apartment building in New York City. You're better off getting a satellite dish. They've been putting out ads talking about the rise of anti picania type of hate. Yeah, okay, whatever. Young kiss my ass. Yeah, yeah, them motherfuckers ruin New York. New York, you could go down the street and you could get a roast battle every three blocks. I miss that New York. That New York built motherfuckers with character. Fuck. But continue. And what's wrong with the left is its agendas, what it actually does, not what it says, but what it does. Because the right doesn't have agendas. Okay. American empire is going down just like other empires have gone down. The university funds it and turns a blind eye. There are whole departments here, the visual arts department, that are sponsoring this hate week. It's funny that it took a black man to say that America's falling, and now all of a sudden you hear on the news every day that America is falling. <laughs> Oh, no, now everybody, now we got to listen to non-black people tell us that the world is falling and America's falling when brothers and sisters before us told us that America was falling. But that's considered woke. What's happened now is you have a coalescing between the, uh, the radical left and radical Islam. They'll have this kind of strange, Hold on one second. strange alliance, even though it seems like they would have absolutely nothing in common, except for they have a common enemy. And that enemy is us. That, that enemy is the liberties and freedoms that the West holds here. Millions all around the country are starting to wake up, but there is a sense of frustration that we are losing our country and people just don't know what to do. Here again, David Horowitz. First, let me say that I have been waiting for just conservatives to wake up for 20 years. I always refer to these people as liberals. There's nothing liberal about these people except their attitudes towards drugs, hard drugs, and sex. That's what they're liberal about. Everything else, they want to control your life. They're intolerant, they're bigoted, and they will try to destroy you, as you're finding out, <laughs> if you disagree with them. <laughs> David Horowitz. <laughs> 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 oh god low country gospel good morning Kevin black good morning still kevin trees good morning patricia slate good morning right research educational organization our goal and our, our mission is to identify America's enemies at home and abroad to identify the left and to educate Americans about how we can protect America, how we can fight the left on campuses, in the media, in Hollywood. We've created websites and we write pamphlets. Oh yeah, because that's that your your work fighting Hollywood is really worked out. <laughs> it's really worked out. Let's uh, we go and speak on campuses about the threats to America and Western civilization and to Israel, and to educate Americans about how serious this threat is and how we can combat it and defend our, our values. David Horowitz knows more about the threat from the left than anyone else in America and all of us. You mean, I'm sure he took them talking points from the brothers and sisters before him, but okay. He, he, he put in that work. He put in that work. He, he, he's gotten all them opportunities. He's been shut down. He's been, he's been labeled a degenerate, all of that. I'm sure he's had his YouTube channel throttled to hell every couple months I'm, I'm sure all right here owe him a debt of gratitude for devoting literally his life to the cause of defeating the left in america the freedom center was started by david horowitz and peter collier 22 years ago now they wanted to start a nonprofit, an organization to kind of further their campaigns they've been talking and thinking about these things they've been writing partners back since the early 60s on the left together edited ramparts magazine so they went through the transformation from the left to the right at the same time 
he drew a line, and the line was, if somebody has not come to the conclusion, to, to the understanding through their experience, that communism is a trick, um, then they haven't truly had second thoughts. The beginning of political morality, in our view, is anti-communism. You know, David is no longer a leftist, of course. He's a conservative. He still is an, an activist. Say that again. That communism is a threat. Um, then they haven't truly had second thoughts. The beginning of political morality, in our view, is anti-communism. Even though David is no longer a leftist, of course, he's a conservative. He still is an, an activist, almost a radical at heart. And it's all about... He's no longer a leftist. He's a conservative. They taught them well. You're no longer a, he's no longer a leftist. He's a conservative. <laughs> The more I hear these people switching from lefty to conservative, it's telling me that y'all really, a lot of y'all had no scruples. I can understand a lefty being confused and thinking that conservative is like the right way to go. I can understand that and actually doing the work. But it sounds like this is just a griff. Going from a lefty to a conservative is a griff. <laughs> it's a griff. See, Tori and I had to say it thought. It's a griff. Because you looked at the evangelical right and know that their purses are a little bit fatter than a lefty's purse is. And you don't like that. So you said, okay, let me go get some of this coin. Huh. Huh. Well. I know real conservatives, people that have conservative views. They don't go running to college campuses trying to educate people who they have no idea what their background is or where they came from. Hmm. Real conservatives do the work in their neighborhoods. The real conservatives do work in their households. Real conservatives do not look for speaking fees at college campuses. Maybe I got it wrong. You wonder why people like us, new black media, I'm sure we got many a fan. Our people don't go outside and say, hey, you should go speak at college campuses. The most they've ever said is, hey, you should go, you should go uh, teach a class. But even then we wouldn't do that. Because we know we'd hit it more here. Hold on one second. I'm fit to play this and go get my groceries. Changing things and shaking up the establishment. The big secret of the left is it claims to be the champion of poor people, minorities, women, children, when in fact it is the oppressor of minorities, women, and children. I think the primary importance that we do is working on the campuses. It's reaching out to students who are being indoctrinated with leftist indoctrination on the campuses. A prominent conservative activist taking the war on terror to America's college campuses. David Horowitz is organizing workshops, film screenings, and protests. It's all part of an event called Islamo Fascism Awareness Week. And the university is supposed to cherish intellectual diversity, freedom of thought, and freedom of speech. When a university allows a leftist group or a, a group like the Muslim Student Association to block free speech, and we've seen this, there's a number of conservative speakers, it's happened to David, when he gets a pie thrown in his face at Butler University, or when he has students get up and shout him down where he cannot finish his speech. Oh, y'all don't like that. Oh, you don't like being shouted down. You don't like when your thought is not respected. Well, damn. Well, damn. Sounds like you need to grow up. Cause we do that every day, all day. We face that every day, all day. And we still persevere. We don't let it bother us. Dirt off your shoulder. Shout out to Jay-Z. On college campuses, coast to coast, it's Islamo-Fascism Awareness Week. Uh, it's a week to make people aware that they, our enemy are Islamo-Fascists and uh, that they're oppressing uh, women. Your enemy is your hairline. You might as well just shaved everything off, bro. You, you're doing too much right here. And that the uh, campus uh, faculties are not talking about this. Oh, these are your people. I don't see a lot of black people here. This is your people. 
Huh. So many uh, scars on my back. I didn't call so many names for so long. Uh, it really doesn't make that much of a difference for me to come to a campus and have to say this. There's no professor that you have on this campus who would be willing to take the risk oh, of being called names like this to raise this question. So you can't discuss this question in Columbia. And that should horrify me. I think most Americans now realize that the universities are kind of in the camp of the left. The question now is, what can we do about it? So we have to continue to educate and train to try to kind of take our campuses train. back and store intellectual diversity on the university. Educate That's really, and I think, train. Our number one achievement. Educate and train. <laughs> educate and train. So you want them to become teachers. Hey, conservatives, since y'all are so upset by the left and what they're doing in these universities, why don't y'all create your own conservative universities? Oh, you're going to tell me Prager U, right? Isn't Prager U indoctrination? Yes, Dennis Prager admitted this. It's indoctrination. So you're no different than the left. Where is your conservative universities that are going to teach conservative values mixed with a balanced education? Where where are these universities? Hmm. I think David's legacy will be in uh, working on the campuses. David's legacy is what he just said about Candace Owens. That's his legacy. That is the height of who he is because nobody cared about him or the Freedom Center before that. Nobody is talking about the Freedom Center Every week, nobody is quoting what he says every week. Nobody's saying a great bastion of knowledge that you need to go to is the David Horowitz Freedom Center. So, yeah. When you're a radical, what you are thinking of is power. It's about power. You adopt this position, you take up that issue, but it's all to advance the power. They want to know what the fuck? They be telling on themselves. I'm going to play that again. I'm not working on the campuses. When you're a radical, what you are thinking of is power. It's about power. You adopt this position, you take up that issue, but it's all to advance the power. They want so what the fuck do you guys be doing on, on a daily basis? You created conservative radicals. What do you... They just be telling on themselves. You created conservative radicals to advance the power. Shit. You can't be serious. You want to know where you know what they can get away with to advance this big agenda, which is to get power and to change everything. We are five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. That's the way they think. The David Hortz Freedom Center is kind of, I mean, that is the. It's funny because he said that one, and then Trump says, make America great again. Wouldn't that mean that he fundamentally changed what Obama did? Which I were cool with that. Hmm. The umbrella organization and within the organization we have a number of programs and among those programs are five or six websites the main ones frontpagemagazine.com is our daily news magazine and then we also have students for academic freedom.org we also have discover the networks.org which is an encyclopedia to the left discover the networks it is fantastic if you want to find out who's connected who and what is going on discover the networks please look at this website we also have jihad watch which is operated by robert spencer but is a program at freedom center jihad watch as you can imagine from the name monitors and studies islam the organization of the Islamic Conference, which is the largest voting bloc of the United Nations today, undertook an initiative to compel the West to criminalize what it called Islamophobia. It includes under the rubric of Islamophobia any discussion of the Islamic texts and teachings that Islamic terrorists use to justify what they're doing. We would be unable to analyze the motives and goals of our enemies and thus be rendered mute and helpless, defenseless, not able to say anything about it. David Horowitz and Peter Collier together, they understand the motivation and the goals of the left, I think, better than anybody. There's not another organization that understands the left and has been able to educate Americans about the nature of the threat from the left and radical Islam. It's critical that we get support. It's critical that we're able to sustain and continue our mission, because I don't think there's another organization that could step in and do exactly what we do. Thank David for having persevered and developed the Restoration Weekend into an extraordinary event. Uh, you have the courage uh, to be in the heart of the other team's camp and to stand firmly for what you believe to be true, and you've really made a difference for America. And Chris and I are thrilled to be here with you.
Even in the website, even in the video, they're going to ask for donations. Okay. Sure. <laughs> so y'all got all that, right? Y'all got all that. Oh, God. So there's no diversity of thought. All right. Cool. Appreciate you saying that. Tabernacle. So these are the Shulman Fellows. I'm guessing... He said, this program presently supports the work of nine showman fellows, including Daniel Greenfield, who edits and writes the daily blog, The Point, and Mark Tapson, an editor of Front Page Magazine and hosts one of Front Page's original podcasts. Uh-huh. White, 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 white. Ooh, I got a black man. Ambiguous. We're going to look up Jason Hill in a second. Ooh. Wait, I'm only counting eight. Wait, let me see. Three, six, four. I'm only counting eight. Maybe it's me. I know it's early. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But it says nine. Maybe I'm missing it. I, I, I Let me count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight. Who's nine? Huh. Okay. Maybe, maybe I'm missing it. Maybe I can't count. Maybe it's me. But I see eight. But okay. David, I have a question. You, 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 you say black privilege, right? You said black privilege. We we played this the other day. You you said something about black privilege. Hmm. I have a question. I think we all have. We might have similar question. You know, let me go here. There is a, there, there's a growing concern. In you talked with Tuck Tuck two years ago. David Horowitz calls Biden a lifelong white supremacist. That's rich coming from you, sir. That's rich. David Horowitz joined Tucker Carlson today to discuss how Democrat policies have adversely impacted minority communities. Let's see what he said. Fair use. So 20 years ago, the U.S. government built a massive national security state to fight the threat from Islamic extremism. That entire apparatus has now been turned on the American population itself. The white supremacists that Joe Biden says live in our midst. White supremacy, Joe Biden has told us, is the greatest threat this country faces. What is it exactly? Who are these people? Why have none been arrested? No one's asked that question. No one in Congress has, not even Republicans. Why is that exactly? David Horowitz is a longtime conservative cops. writer, but he began his career on the hard left. He's the son of communists. He understands exactly what's happening. He's been predicting it for quite a bit of time. We just spoke to David Horowitz for a brand new episode of Tucker Carlson today. Here's part of that conversation. Republicans are poor defenders of our country because they're poor messengers. The Democrats control and have controlled every major city, inner city in America for 50 to 100 years control them 100%. Every injustice, real uh, or imagined, in the inner city is done to minorities and to black people in particular. Democrats are 100% responsible for. And yet, Republicans are too polite to ever mention this. It's as though they don't want to embarrass their enemies by confronting them with their worst crimes. So the, everything that we've seen, all these protests uh, in this tearing up the cities, which was uh, over the summer, which were done with Democrat support, uh, the, these racist mayors, largely black and 100% and Democrat, uh, encouraged the riots, uh, did not call out the proper forces to suppress them, uh, to arrest these people, uh, allowed them to occupy our cities and burn them. Were... Why does he sound like the rights version of RFK Jr.? Over 600 violent, violent riots uh, in 220 American cities. Um, th this is the problem in our country. Everything's upside down. Uh, the racism in our country is, a, is an epidemic of anti-white racism. You can say anything about white people. Uh, you can fling terms like white supremacy around um, with no evidence, no basis in, in reality. America is not a racist society in the, in the least. 
And you know. <laughs> America is not a racist society by definition. Is he fucked up? Uh huh. By the way, it's it's such not a racist society. You were able to write a whole fucking book saying how black skin privilege is the worst bias that faces this country. This is what this book is about. But you're right. You're right. America is not inherently racist. You're you're exactly right. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> ah. They are They're a weird one. They they they're a weird one. I'm not talking white people now. I'm talking about conservatives. They're they're a weird lot. They're a weird lot to heal. You know, this stuff is wrong. Hear me clearly. America is not a racist country. It's backwards to fight. The so shackles off my feet <laughs> said the same thing. So shackles off my feet said that. <laughs> And this this fool just said the same damn thing. Just want to make sure y'all heard it. White people, uh, you can fling terms like white supremacy around um, with no evidence, no basis in, in reality. America is not a racist society in the in the least. America is not a racist society in the least. <laughs> Say less. America is not a racist country. Uh huh. Yeah. Hey, Tim Scott, it, it, it's such not a racist country. They let Uncle Tim trend, but they're not racist, right? <laughs> They they clowned your will be nice, your girlfriend, saying that you and her weren't really together. But we're an intelligent black society, so we'll say it like this. They clowned your beard. But they're not a racist society. Uh, David Horowitz, when you said this, you you, you literally had black people killed. <laughs> <laughs> on the street by cops literally literally but wait you know what it is family he he's a he he said he's against the left he's against the left right that's what he said that's what he said America is not a racist country. Yet Kamami said the same thing. Y'all don't believe me. I believe that we need to address. Well, first of all, no, I don't think America is a racist country, but. Hmm. God is not a racist country. Hmm. believe that we need to address. Well, first of all, no, I don't think America is a racist country, but we also. Hmm. Violent, violent riots uh, in 220 American cities. Um, th this is the problem in our country. Everything's upside down. Uh, the racism in our country is, a, is an epidemic of anti-white racism. You can say anything about white people. 
Uh, you can fling terms like white supremacy around um, with no evidence, no basis in, in reality. America is not a racist society in the, in the least. And, you know, Joe Biden, what does he say? The greatest threat is not ISIS, it's not China, it's, it's not the Iranian terrorists. The greatest threat to America is white supremacy. Well, he must be talking about himself because he's been a lifelong white supremacist. Uh, and I, I guess he's, uh, he's doing some kind of a, what he thinks is a personal atonement by dumping that charge uh, unjustly on his country. Uh, but it's a monstrous lie. Now, why aren't Republicans referring to the Democrats as the racists that they are? This is a racist party. The equity programs are designed to help black people and minorities like small business people, but not whites. How racist is that? Yeah, the only Republican I know who's called a Democrat a racist is Donald Trump. And that's why they hate Donald Trump. Republicans have to stop being so nice and going along with this language control. Um, you know, the border crisis, this is treason. You can't blow up the southern border in the midst of a pandemic. Uh, it's not only, I mean, the, the conservative estimate is that 100,000 coronavirus carriers will come in illegally into the country this year, thanks to the Democrats. But of course, there's the, you know, the billion dollar cartels that they're empowering. There are the sex traffickers. People are dying. You don't hear rhetoric coming from the Republican Party that even approaches the seriousness uh, of the problem that the Democrats have created. They betrayed the country. Our conversation with David Horowitz, fascinating, went on for about an hour. You can find it on foxnation.com under Tucker Carlson today. Hmm. So you said that two years ago, when, when did this come out? August 2nd. Funny. Because Tim Scott's comment. We're going to play it again. So hard to heal. You know this stuff is wrong. Hear me clearly. America is not a racist country. So Tim Scott said that four months before you talked to Tucker and said what you said, how America is not a racist society. Now he said a racist society. Okay. Huh. I, I, I see the vision. I see the vision. Cornelius Jones, good morning. I see the vision. 42 tribes, good morning. I see the vision. Then I see this. You know, let me go here. There is a, <laughs> there, there's a growing concern. In Tabernacle. Mm. David Horowitz, you ran to the blaze. Well, I don't know. I'm sorry, Daniel Horowitz. Now, this guy said, it's not the same guy, but I want, I want to show y'all something. Because I don't see this man saying anything about Tim Scott. I mean, he didn't even say that Tim Scott was right. He didn't even say that. I said, Tim Scott has already disqualified himself by choosing grievance over greatness. I'm sure that's a sentiment that he echoes because of what he said about Candace. So, David, by your logic, do you agree with Kamala Harris that America is not a racist country slash society? Do you do you agree with her on that? I, I'm just trying to find out something for a friend. Do you agree with her on that? Because you said black skin privilege is the worst racial bias. Well, no, I'm sorry. It's the worst bias that America faces, black skin privilege. And, you know, people have propped up Kamala Harris to be a black woman. And she's number two in the country in terms of power. If you want to go by the line of succession. <coughs> hmm. So when her black skin give her a privilege of being that, but she says America is not a racist country. I'm just asking for a friend. Do you agree with someone who's on the left? I'm asking.
it's an it's an it's an, it's an interesting dynamic how this worked out. You hate black people, but you basically took a statement from a black person and agreed with them, whether you meant to do it or not. Hmm. But you love you some Donald Trump. It always comes back to Trump. <sighs> Damn. I don't know. I don't know. He has events coming up, family. Who's in Florida? He has events coming up. Who who wants to who wants to do the deal and go over there and see what they're talking about? He's gonna be in Palm Beach, Florida. Let's see what this is. It's a dinner. $500 a copy. Hmm. Freedom Center cordially, invi cordially invites you to Palm Beach dinner, Wednesday, December 6th. Ironically, the same day as the fourth RNC debate. I wonder if they're going to watch it live. Kino Speeder. Keep speeder. Keynote speaker Peter Hegseth, a co host of Fox and Friends Weekend on the Fox News channel. He's also a Fox Nation host, number one New York Times bestselling author, and Army combat veteran. Hmm. I love how they always get on the New York Times list at number one and act like people are really buying this book. I didn't even know this motherfucker had a book. I ain't hear nobody shilling it. Nobody. This came out last year. I didn't hear nobody shilling this book. But okay. So the reception is at 6.30, dinner and program 7.15, close of evening 9.30. Lord have mercy. So you get a general admission ticket for five hundred dollars just to get in and get a plate. You go to a thousand, you get a VIP reception access and everything else, and a photo op. Host committee, you get two tickets, preferred seat seating, and program recognition. So you get to stand up and just throw up your hand real quick and give quick nods. Then they have 10,000, you get four tickets and the same thing. Huh? And I bet the food sucks. Who's paying for this? Where are the white people that are gonna pay for this? I would like to see them. I want the menu. Please, somebody go online and put this out. I need to see what they ate. Should make a gray hello. I need to see what they eat. I need. I need that. Okay, this is Eventbrite. Let me go back to this Wednesday morning club. Victor Davis Hassan. Hansen. I can't read this morning. I'm sorry. Might be that rum punch I drank last night. Okay, so you're at the Lux Sunset Boulevard Hotel. It's funny that y'all keep doing this in L.A. And L.A. is supposed to be like leftist he heaven. I, I, I don't understand this. You're going to tell me there's no city outside of L.A. you could go have these events at. The Wednesday Morning Club welcomes Victor Davis ha Hansen. The Stakes for America is their hope. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Okay. <sighs> The Hoover Institution. The Hoover Institution. We've discussed that here. Sorry, I didn't even show y'all that. My bad. The Hughes, the Hoover Institution. 
Stanford University. We're going somewhere with this. These two, somebody else is part of this. We're not going to say the name here, but y'all know the person's black, by the way. Who is paying $95 to hear this man talk and get lunch? Oh, God. Okay. Okay. I'm curious. I've never heard of the Wednesday Morning Club. Wait, when when is this event? It's called the Wednesday Morning Club, but you're doing the event on a Friday. Okay. Interesting. Let me guess. This is probably another think tank. Let's see. Wednesday morning club. Program schedule. This can't be it. No, this can't be it. Let me see. This might not be it. This might be something different. Hold on. That might not be it. Uh, da, 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 da. Victor Davis Hansen. They got to have a website. Where is it? He has a fan club. I did not know this. He's done this before. So I'm telling you, being a conservative grifter has its perks. They got to speak at the Four Seasons in Beverly Hills. Huh. It must pay. What the hell just happened? Sorry. These are dark times. We're in a revolutionary era. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Let me see something. Hmm. Southern racism. Hmm. The mythologies of Black Lives Matter. Hmm. The old South shall rise again. Hmm. The old South will rise again. In the aftermath, plantation owners began to prefer to import black slaves from the Caribbean and Africa and pass slave statutes to formalize a racial distinction between temporarily indentured white servants and permanently indentured black slaves. The effect was to support the power of established plantation owners over the poor of both races. So the old South was allowed to segregate and do that shit. But now that affirmative action was there, y'all had a problem with it. You bring your own two bit. It still costs you $95. I wouldn't do it. Sybil, good morning. My head hurts. Cornelius Jones, hello. My head hurts. My head hurts. 
What is this? The old sow shall rise again. I didn't know it left. But okay. My head hurts. Okay. Let me see if he has any other fellows we might be interested in. Da, 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 da. Oh, he did a zero tolerance interview four years ago. The Black Book of the American Left. <laughs> Okay. Wow, somebody from Georgetown went in on him. Okay. Yes. For those who didn't know, Hoover Institution. Oh, boy. Members. Now that's the directors. This is... Yeah, prominent fellows. Excuse me. Uh, let's see. There's Victor. Um, hold on. Think tanks. David Horowitz Freedom Center. I had to make sure he was on there. <clears throat> Thomas Soul. So there you go. Mm. 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 It's uh I'm showing y'all something, family. I'm showing y'all something. I know it doesn't seem like there's a lot of information, but I'm actually telling you something by just scrolling through here. This guy swears he's so important, yet most of the things that come up in searches are what he said about Candace and old shit that he wrote that nobody would have searched for. Because again, these conservatives love to talk about these people that we should be listening to. I've noticed many names. I've never heard one of them say David Horowitz. I've never seen it. Ooh, what is this? What is this? Oh, Lord. <laughs> University of California, San Diego students remark triggers controversy. Let's see what this is. Once again, a passionate debate has thrust the University of California, San Diego into the spotlight. This time over comments between a controversial Jewish author and a Muslim student. On May 10th, David Horowitz, a conservative author known for lashing out against radical Islam, was a guest speaker on campus. He was invited by the student group Young Americas for Freedom. Yeah. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. Didn't it, I played that clip for a reason, family? Didn't this guy say what the left is doing on these campuses is no good? So if they're the left is on these campuses doing no good, how the hell did they allow young Americans for freedom to fuck around and have a foothold on that campus to the point where they could afford to hire David Horowitz. Hmm. Okay. The debate was meant to promote a healthy dialogue, but in the end, it seemed to just do the opposite. 
do just the opposite. During the forum, Horowitz asked a student, a member of the Muslim Student Association at US, UCSD, if she supports terrorist organizations like Hamas. I guess they don't have them. She responds by answering, are you asking me to put myself on a cross? The student then adds, if I say something, I'm sure I will be arrested for reasons of homeland security. <coughs> Excuse me. The exchange came to a head when the guest speaker asked the student a loaded question. I'm a Jew, began Horowitz. The head of Hezbollah has said that he hopes we will all gather in Israel so that he doesn't have to hunt us down globally. Horowitz then raises his voice and asks, for it or against it? Oh, so you tough. Because I guarantee you wouldn't say this like this if this was a Muslim man. Guarantee it. After a pause, the student leans into the microphone and answers for it. Yehuda Hajaji is a rabbi at UCSD. He said those comments make many made many Jewish students feel uneasy on campus. Quote, it was very painful for us to hear that, says Hajad. We had someone telling us that they will be hunting us down whether we are wherever we are. And if we would all be in Israel, it would be easier for them. It brings a very uncomfortable situation atmosphere on campus. Some accused Horowitz of having extreme views himself. At the time of the speech, the MSA was taking part in Justice in Palestine Week. The event is meant to shed light on the region's humanitarian crisis. Horowitz reportedly linked the cause to terrorist groups. Critics say he even referred to the event as Fewer Youth Week. Fewer Youth Week. They're not even the same. Okay. In a statement, the student apologized for her comments by saying she didn't fully hear the question she was asked. Had I understood the nature of the question she wrote, I would never have responded the way I did by providing an answer that misrepresented my beliefs. You could have just easily asked them to repeat the question, but okay. A UCSD spokesperson issued the following written statement at UCSD. We strongly condemn any suggestion that violence, especially genocidal violence, is a legitimate political tool. We firmly believe that this is one student's opinion is not representative of the opinions of the majority of our student body. Along those same lines, UCSD's Muslim Student Association also sent out a statement which said no individual student can speak for the entire group. So you bring, so you brought the Fuhrer into a justification. So you already went in there with a bias. Don't this what these um, conservatives like to do on these campuses with Young Americans Foundation? They would just love to try to bait them into a gotcha. Hmm. Okay. I said it once, I'll say it again. The white vote will doom us all. Who mans is this? Whose man is this? This man literally said black skin privilege is the worst bias we have. And literally dropped the one thing that brought him into existence lately. I don't understand this. I don't understand this. Maybe I'm missing it. Hmm. 
The streets are even saying that he was spying on civil rights organizations. Hmm. So to be a conservative, you would have to follow Marxist ideology. Okay. Hmm. I wonder what his views are on civil rights now. Hmm. Let's find out, shall we? Tabernacle. Mm. Horowitz maintained his assault on the political left. This is from the Southern Poverty Law Center. In 2005, the group established Discovery the Networks, an online encyclopedia of the left and a comprehensive profile of left-wing organizations and individuals. Made available on the DHFC webpage, the resource strangely cites a number of white nationalist groups, namely the Council of Conservative Citizens, or CCC, which served as a primary gateway for Dylan Roof. Huh. Hold on. Yes. Wow, you see the five more Yes. Can you Catherine, please? Thank you. Sorry about that. A prolific writer, Horwitz has published a number of hard right publications, many offering a glimpse of his political evolution in a pamphlet titled Hating Whitey. Hating Whitey. Okay. He argued that contemporary leaders of the black community had squandered the legacy of the civil rights movement by reframing the civil rights agenda as a radical cause. Huh? In a book of the same title published in 1999, he made racially charged claims about black on white crime. Voicing criticisms of affirmative action that would last through the election of President Obama, who he since called a communist with a curious background. Yes. Kids. Okay. Ooh, here we go. A vocal opponent of reparations for slavery. Horowitz has also attacked minority demands for special treatment as only necessary because some blacks can't seem to locate the ladder of opportunity with the reach of others. The fact that it is not tolerable in America to hate blacks. <laughs> it's not tolerable. All right. But it is okay in your politically correct culture to hate white people, states Horowitz and hating whitey. Horowitz, ever critical of American academia, continues, of course, a leftist academy has already answered for every question about black racism. Only whites can be racist. That's not what, okay. Something I need. Vocal opponent of reparations. Well, there you go. <laughs> a vocal re opponent of reparations but of course we knew that we knew that we knew that tabernacle of course we knew that 
See, David Horowitz, 10 reasons why reparations for slavery is a bad idea for blacks and racist too. I am not purchasing this. Screw you. They added it as a syllabus at a college. Well, look at this. Oh, they took it down. Well, ain't that some? <laughs> ain't that some? Now you can't find it. What is this? Maybe this is it. Uh, damn, it's just a preview. Fuck. Anybody got a a, a college ID that I can use so we can read this? I, I would like I would like to I would like to read this. Ooh, what is this? Somebody's response. Fifty one dollars for this article, man. You must be crazy. <clears throat> All right. Mm. They really put this shit behind a paywall. Ain't that something? <clears throat> they really did this. Oh Lord, I am not filling this out. Um, I'm not filling this out. Next, I'm not filling this out. But there you go. Ain't nothing else to say. Can't take him serious. <coughs> oh, no. Hey, they, hey, Cornelius, they were aggrieved, remember? They went through some shit. So they were allowed. They, they, they had to get money. And a lot of white folk have demonstrated eloquently that they don't have no sense. Holy crap, somebody might have found oh Twitter is a damn wait. Maybe I fuck I have to sign in. Wait, what? If I disable the ad block, I could read it. Wait a minute. We might have to do this. Uh where is it? Um let me see. Shit. How do you turn off this ad blocker? Oh, I need this. No, I need this. How do you turn this off? Shit, I need this. I might have found it. I need it though. They're telling me that I can't. I I can't have it. Yes. Okay, so leave it. Oh man. How do you disable this? Damn it. How do you I don't even know I don't know how you turn this off. Come on, I'm so close. I need this. Catherine, go. Oh, oh, oh. oh come on. Uh, turn this off.
I'll just remove it. Fuck it. I'll put it back on. I need this. Oh, I really want to hit. Fuck you. All right, never mind. Now I got to subscribe to it. Never mind. Maybe I'll pay for it. And we'll do it next week. <sighs> but anyway. But y'all get it. He's a... Uh, he don't like he don't like reparations. He don't like reparations. What's that you said? Uh, low country gospel said a prolific writer is not equated to a prophetic writer. Well, that is true. Uh, change the verbiage of slavery to employment sue for unequal wages and forfeiture of interest under those of those under payment then <laughs> we know they're not going to do that they really took this shit down <laughs> him talking about reparations they really took this thing down That's crazy. No, I'm not signing up for Tumblr just to read that. That that's crazy. I'm not doing that. Somebody got it. I guess I don't. Hmm. <laughs> All right, maybe I'll pay for it, and we'll we'll do it next week. Maybe I, I'll decide that. I, I don't want to. This guy's. That's all I need to know. This guy doesn't like reparations. That's all I need to know. But anyway, gotta watch him. Gotta watch this guy because this guy. All of a sudden, now he's surfacing. Try to get that last of that Griff money before November 5th, 2024. Mm. All right, family. I'm going to get up out of here and get ready to go to the plantation. I appreciate y'all coming in here. I wish I had more information for you, but, you know, you got to pay to read bigotry. Maybe if I pay for it, I'll do an upload on that and we'll just go through each one of his 10 reasons why it's not good to give the cousins reparations and why it's racist. <sighs> but anyway, hopefully y'all learned something. If you did, I did my job. If not, I will try to do better next time. So make sure that y'all go to my community tab and participate in the poll for the Sambo Lorian. <coughs> Excuse me, the Sambo Lorian Awards. Yes, they are coming next month and it's going to be fun. And the winner of that will get a roasting by yours truly. So here it is. We have 45 votes already, and I just put it up a couple hours ago. And, and <laughs> of course, predictably, Candace Owens is leading the pack like Trump is leading the RNC. And I did make sure to put a lot of, uh, what do you call it, reference material so you guys can know who each person is if you don't remember. Yeah. So make sure you have participated. I'm going to put the link in the chat. 
and then get ready to go to work. So there it is. Y'all take care, stay safe, and you know what to do when the ages of chaos come to mess up your day.